Barry. You need police, fire, or ambulance? I need police. Okay, and what's going on there? I've been kidnapped, and I've been missing for 10 years, and I'm, I'm here. I'm free now. The girl Amanda told the police, I ain't just the only ones. It's some more girls up in that house. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to look at a horrific true story that happened in Cleveland, Ohio. Let's get right into it. May 6, 2013 began as a routine spring evening in Cleveland, Ohio, but soon it would mark an evening of unimaginable horror. What happened was the dramatic escape of three young Cleveland women who had been held captive for over a decade in an ordinary house on Seymour Avenue. You need police, fire, or ambulance? I need police. Okay, and what's going on there? I've been kidnapped, and I've been missing for 10 years, and I'm, I'm here, I'm free now. Okay. Their courageous break for freedom stunned the local community and brought an end to 10 years of brutal abuse and cruelty. Our story starts back in 2002, when women began disappearing off the streets of Cleveland without a trace. In April 2002, 21-year-old Amanda Berry vanishes while returning home from work. She is last heard from calling her sister for a ride. I had gotten off of work early that day, and I worked at Burger King. I called my sister for a ride. She was at work, and I had called a friend for a ride, and he didn't answer, so I just started walking. And as I was walking, there was a van. Then, 14-year-old Gina DeJesus disappears walking home from school in 2004. Her devastated family puts up flyers while desperately searching but hears nothing. He'd been on his motorcycle and he'd seen your mum handing out flyers about your disappearance. And he had gone up and taken a flyer from her and asked if there was any information about you which... Incredibly, just months later, 21-year-old Michelle Knight also vanishes after leaving to meet her mother. Three women gone without explanation. Rumors spread it could be a serial kidnapper snatching victims in plain sight. But unknown to all, the culprit was Ariel Castro, an ordinary school bus driver who grew up in the area and lived right in the neighborhood. Ariel Castro moved here in 1992 and he was well known in the area. For over a decade inside his home at Seymour Avenue. This is Seymour Avenue, less than four miles from where the girls were abducted. Castro viciously abused his three captive women, mercilessly beating them, raping them, and fathering children only to kill them shortly after birth. Raped over and over again, half-starved, sometimes beaten, and never allowed out of the squalid, airless house. Amanda became pregnant. I had realized that I hadn't got my period, and that was like the first sign. And then I had started like getting sick, like I couldn't eat anything, and I would just throw it up. The women remained chained day and night inside the house without escape. But what happened next will shock you. On May 6, 2013, Amanda Berry suddenly reappeared. That evening, Castro mistakenly left his front storm door unlocked before leaving. This small mistake gave Amanda the chance to start screaming. Yelling and screaming, and I'm like, I have my, it was just about that much room that I could fit my arm through. So I have my arm like waving, going crazy, like somebody, please help me. It caught the attention of neighbor Angel Cordero, who spotted Amanda holding a small child through a gap in the storm door. I see this girl going nuts, trying to get out of her house. So we kick the bottom, and she comes out with the little girl, and she says, call 911. You need police fire Amanda told Cordero her name. The first confirmation to shocked neighbors, it was Amanda Berry long missing for 11 years. As Castro drove back and saw the gathering crowd outside, Cordero gave chase until police arrived and discovered Michelle and Gina chained and padlocked inside. Cleveland rejoiced as Amanda Berry, Gina DeJesus, and Michelle Knight had miraculously been found alive after over 10 years missing. But cheers turned to horror and outrage as emerging details revealed the house's dark secrets. Castro had turned Seymour Avenue into his own torture chamber, luring his victims into his trap as young girls off the street only to sadistically beat, starve, and rape them repeatedly for over a decade of sheer brutality. He broke Michelle Knight's jaw, beat her viciously. Amanda Berry later described him as a monster, for the constant mental, physical, and sexual abuse endured. She was raped daily over the decade of captivity, up to five times a day. 
you almost made a code, didn't you? I mean, the code, you were being raped repeatedly, sometimes up to five times a day, but what you did, would you just put 3x, 4x, 5x? Now, why did you do that? I knew eventually if uh, we were ever freed, you know, my mom would read this and... The three women were deprived of large portions of food for extended periods, and some days they did nothing at all. Castro controlled them with violent threats should they try to escape. He told them he would kill them and then take police right to their bodies. They were terrified to attempt fleeing again after initial failed efforts that led to severe beatings. Shocked neighbors now grappled with how an seemingly ordinary man embedded in their community could hide such evil. He had even participated in vigils for Gina after her disappearance. His decade of unrelenting abuse now exposed, Castro pled guilty to over 900 criminal counts of kidnapping, rape, and murder in a plea deal. At his sentencing, a courageous Michelle Knight stepped forth to confront her tormentor, declaring she had endured 11 years of hell but would overcome. For, you took 11 years of my life away, and I have got it back. I spent 11 years in hell. Now your hell is just beginning. I will overcome all this that happened, but you will face hell for eternity. One month later, Castro committed suicide by hanging himself in his cell with bedsheets. While his victims still face emotional trauma, their bold escape for freedom ended the nightmare, bringing hope and healing to three families who had long grieved. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell button. Take care.